Hey guys, coming at you for a review of Coco. I saw it a couple days ago. I filmed a review, but then I looked like trash in the review, which is not saying I look that much better today. Coming at y'all with no makeup on whatsoever. So, Coco came out earlier this year. I'll go into the story first, and then I'll talk about the beautiful things and then the dark things. Cause it gets dark, like real quick, real dark. So Coco is a movie made by Disney. Um, it's about this boy named Miguel. He wants to play music, but because of history in his family, like his great, great, great grandfather left the house to play music, uh, left his wife and child, didn't come back. So of course music is now banned in the entire family. And I loved how like they had her as that like, she didn't cry. She just got up and started making shoes. And so now the entire family is like a shoe maker family and they're like prosperous off of that in Mexico. Didn't really say what city, but it's fine. So, Miguel wants to play music. It's aching in his bones. I mean, it's kind of technically in his blood because his great grandfather was a musician and like famous enough to be able to go on the road. And he wants to do it. His grandmother is so, his family's against it, but his grandmother's like super against it because his grandmother, so it's his grandmother, his great grandmother, and his great great. His great great, you know how that works. So if it's his grandma, then his great great was her grandma. So yeah, she's like really still. They're only like four generations, great, great, great grandma, like four generations out of the whole fiasco of the father leaving. So he wants to play music. He's got this like idol who's like the greatest musician ever known, like especially, especially in his town. He's like a hometown hero. They have like a whole shrine to him, like where his bone or his uh, body is buried. Uh, in their city so like the day of the dead is coming up and they're telling him to get ready um but he wants to play music stuff goes wrong grandma finds out that he's trying to play music because he's actually like made a guitar from things that he's found like his grandfather's old or one of his grandfather's like old uh guitar like i guess they had taken the strings and everything off of it but he made it with like string and nails and was playing it he, he learned how to play from watching this guy the the great hometown hero on screen so day of the dead comes or, get, or gets close to come comes and he wants to go play because there's a contest in the market and he really can play grandmother smashes his guitar so he just takes off running and he so there's like a shrine so like on the day of the dead i forgot what it's called but like they pretty much put all of their family members pictures up on this table to like pay homage to them and then they have these pet these flower petals they have to like sprinkle throughout the home to like lead the spirits back it's very beautiful like again we'll get into that later so on that night after he gets his guitar smashed he th he he breaks the picture that has his great grandmother father his great grand his great grandmother and her baby in it and then he breaks the picture frame on accident his dog does it and then he unfolds it and sees that the grandfather's head is cut out, but he's holding the guitar and the guitar is what he has, the guitar that he fixed. So he figured that the famous guy was his grandfather because the famous guy had the same guitar. So he breaks into the tomb to try to steal the guitar. And then because he was stealing from the dead, he got transported into the land of the dead. Get down there, his whole family is down there. They're trying to get him back. He meets his great, great grandmother the one whose picture he knocked down and she can't cross over because there isn't a picture and there's also this like rascally scoundrel guy scoundrel guy who can't cross over either because there's not a picture of him anywhere and he's been desperately trying to cross over because you can't cross over unless someone has put a picture of you to remember you he goes to the, to the dead and like his family is really concerned about him because if he stays there until sunup he will become dead as well he will never return back to the land of living i mean not as a live person anyway so his grandmother and them have to give him a blessing. She goes to give him the blessing, but the condition is that he can never play music. And so he doesn't want to go back that way. And he figured since his grandfather is this famous guy and he's also dead, that he can go find this guy and that guy can give him the blessing and he can be able to play music. So the entire story is centering around him trying to find this guy who he and the audience figures out is his grandfather. And he's like, as he's as popular in the land of the dead as he is in America, well, not America, but in the land of the living. So that's pretty much what the whole shenanigan comes. Like, uh, there's spirit animals in there. Um, 
spirit animals are in there and the grandmother has one that helps him that helps her track him down and he also starts working with the scoundrel who can't cross over because he's really he just wants the little boy to take his picture back so that he can put it on the shrine so that people can start to remember him so that he can cross over because he has a daughter over there that he really wants to talk to because or he wants for her to like remember him more I'll get into that later so the whole there's a couple of side plots number one he comes into his own with, the, with his music because he really wants to play music like he'd rather almost die than not play music for forever the scoundrel so he is like kind of lovable kind of like a nadeur and you find out like why he looks so rickety it turns out that if no one is there to remember you once the last part well if you're not up on a shrine or the table with all the pictures if they don't remember you if like the last person who remembers you dies and you die in the, in the land of the dead and you cannot come back and so this guy only has his daughter left and she's really old and so she's like starting to forget him and so he started to like you know fold over every time she gets like more and more advanced along because she's starting to forget him and so that's why he wants his picture back so long story short i don't want to give too much away but whatever way you thought this movie was going it turns dark real dark real quick and a kid almost dies and like yeah it gets dark so i think i've told you a lot um let's get into what i did not expect from this movie let's let's talk about what i liked i like the fact that the entire cast is people of hispanic heritage like there is not a white person a black person an asian person they're all hispanic heritage and i think some of them even came from like telenovelas and I love that because I think a lot of times movies will try to say this is based in Africa, Lion King, and have Matthew Broderick playing Simba and Jeremy Irons playing Scar. So yeah, nothing like that happened. It was awesome. Um, they did that with Moana as well. I think most of the people there were of in of like Polynesian heritage, which was awesome, the movie was great. So yeah, I love that. The colors are beautiful, oh my, like the scenes are just so like grand and everything, like they, hats off to you Pixar, it was beautiful to look at. Like the colors, the creatures, the characters, like this little boy had like the biggest like brown, like just I wanted to hug him and like love him, so yeah that was beautiful um storyline they really like punch you in the gut with the feelings like i have not cried at movie in theaters i think i teared up at the end of the lord of the rings the return of the king because you can't split up frodo and sam that was sad but other than that like i haven't cried in a long time but this movie got you um, so here's some like, all right, so it gets you and then the storyline, like the pacing, like this movie was just good. Like it was a very good, like fish out of water, feel good, awesomeness. The twist. All right. So you see, this movie's dark guys. You see, how many deaths have we seen in this movie? Three. We saw at least three and a couple were implied. Three people minimum die. So the famous guy. He dies by getting the bell dropped on him. And you see the actual, like, he's singing and you see the bell fall on him and he's dead. Then there's, like, backstabbing in here and somebody gets poisoned. Like, I don't want to give too much away because the end is, is kind of, the end, I don't want to give it away. But just know that you see someone get poisoned in this film by a friend, like, backstabbingly. So that's dark. One of the, the guys, when they're explaining what happens when somebody forgets you, he just kind of floats away and dies. And I'm like, guys, that's that's three people so far. That's not, they're not in order. There's three people dying on camera. Then at one point, uh, y'all know I told you that if Miguel doesn't get back, I, so you know how I told you like. 
if Miguel doesn't get back by Sunday. If he doesn't. So if he doesn't get back to the land of the living by sunrise, then he's gonna die. So like throughout the whole movie, like the tips of his fingers are starting to become invisible and you can see his bone. So then he gets to the person he's looking for and then some stuff happens. And then the guy, knowing that he will die if he stays in the land dead, doesn't give him his blessing and gets him dropped down into like this cavern to just die so that he can never go back to the land of the living. And I was like, that's dark, because that's really dark. Like, you're trying to kill off a kid. And it also happens again, same guy tries to kill off a kid in a Disney film. Another thing that is uh, not advertised well, that y'all dropped the ball on this, because Coco looks like it's about a boy and his dog. And Coco looks like it's gonna be the name of the dog. It's actually not. It's the name of his great-grandmother. So, I mean, like literally all the promotion was just like looking, f focusing on this Mexican hairless dog. And you're like, okay, Coco's gonna gonna be some silly thing about the dog's perspective because you know how Pixar is. They take the perspective of everything that's not a human and you know, it's about them. Nope, Coco is about this older lady. She's a sweetheart. She's a, she's like this adorable abuelita. Beast abuelita. I think that's great grandmother. I would eat that room. I think it's beast. I would eat that. I don't know. Great. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, they dropped the ball on that. There's an awesome twist at the end. And boy, let me tell you, they punch you straight. I think I said it earlier, but they really punch you in the gut. The last 20 minutes, it's literally like a succession of like four scenes. You're gonna cry because we're Pixar, and you actually cry. Real tears, the lights came up and like everybody was like this. Yeah, this movie, good job guys. You, you did it. It was awesome, I think everyone should go see it if you haven't. It's probably in the Dollar Movie Theater by now, which is even more incentive to go see it. And, um, all right guys, I'm gonna go. Say hello to my special guest, this is Nut Pepe. Um, nice talking. I think I have a review of The Last Jedi coming out because, you know, why not? I've had this channel for a while. I do a lot of things. I travel, I go to shows, I go to plays, I go to movies. Uh, I do makeup, but not really. You ain't get no, you ain't get no videos from me from that. Um, yeah, I do events, I do a lot of things. I do, I'm more than just my hair, which is, um, it's better. Um, but I'll do a separate video about that. Bye.